expecting. Uh, you, you are not at that point for whatever the reason, just life or maybe you got distracted, but you're not expecting anymore. Now, God spoke to us about three weeks ago that when you pray, there must be an expectation. And God has really been dealing with me about expectation in in my personal life, in the church's life, um, you know, just in my entire life. I think I am living probably the most amazing life. And that's because many years ago, that was my expectation. And uh, I, I, I can't even tell you, I think I talk on living the amazing life and what that means. And you know, if you're going to live the amazing life, that means that you got to constantly be in a state of expectation. And sometimes when we um, start living our normal lives, we really stop developing new ideas. We stop being creative and innovative about our own lives kind of get in a rut. And we start doing the same thing the same way. And if you're going to maximize the divine nature of God, if you're going to really tap into that, I want to really stir up your expectations. I really want you to get back in the place of expecting something so big, so gigantic, so enormous that it totally goes beyond your own ability. Something that keeps you awake at night. Something that is so big. So two things that I had before the Lord was number one, to meet Steve Harvey. Oh yes, yes. That is a major expectation. Oh yes, that I yes. Oh yeah. I believe that he needs to read my book. Amen. Oh yeah. And I believe that he needs to talk about my book. Yes. Oh yeah. And I believe that he needs to put me on the show. Oh yeah. And I talk about my book. Yes. 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 Now that's what I when I think about expectation, I'm I'm talking about something so gigantic, mm-hmm. something so enormous that you know when it happens, God did. Amen. Right? Amen. My second expectation was to meet Hillary Clinton. I don't know which one I had first, but that was a huge expectation for me. That I would um, meet her and that I would have access to her and that I would be able to go to the White House. I've never been to the White House. And there are pastors in this town that during the Obama administration, they have been invited several times, but I wasn't on that list. So I had an expectation before the Lord that I would meet Hillary Clinton. I didn't know if I was going to meet her in an airport. I, I didn't know how. See, here's the thing about expectation. You don't know how God's going to do it. Right, right. right. And so, of course, meeting her was so gigantic. Meeting her was so enormous for me. And being able to have um, limited access, but still access, and still be on a short list that whenever she is in the area, I get invited. So that's really a big expectation. That was a really big expectation. Now, your expectation doesn't always have to be quote unquote spiritual. It can be professional. Yes. Uh, it can be relationship-wise. Amen. I fully have a big expectation in that area. Y'all don't need to hear. Oh, but I do. I have a big expectation that uh, praise God because I don't want to get married right away. Amen. Amen. I, I'm really seriously thinking about shacking, but <laughs> chicken shack. <laughs> 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 y'all, might, y'all might fire for his past. <laughs> See, I got laughing, but I'm not I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I don't want to compare, but I have an expectation of the kind of man that I would like to be, you know, courted or be courted by. And it's a big, it's huge. Y'all know that, you know, I think big. 
Mm-hmm. So I won't I won't discuss that, but it's a, it's gigantic. So it would really take God to do. And every area when I think about the foundation, I think about uh, SOAR, I think about the International Institute of Expansion, the kind of clients that I want to coach mm-hmm. are the kinds of clients that will retain me for a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yes. See, that's gigantic. Yes, amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's enormous. Now, some of it may never happen. But if you actually create within yourself a capacity mm-hmm. for your expectation, it will not be disappointed. Right. And I don't think that believers believe in their own expectations anymore. I think we just get frustrated. And we just get in a rut of doing things little, doing things small. And sometimes we say, well, it's the money. But it didn't cost me anything to meet Hillary Clinton. Mm. That was my expectation. And I would say it to people. And I would say it to people. And I would say, you know, I really want to meet Hillary Clinton. And one day I said it to the right person. Yeah. And the right person said, is that all you want? And I was like, yeah. You know somebody? And she got on the phone. And that has, that has now... That was just major for me. That was, I can't even tell you how major that was for me. But if you, if you lose your expectation, if you stop being innovative and being creative in your mind, God really doesn't have anything that he can do for you. Right. It's true, yes. That, that, that you need to have an expectation. You need to have something before God that God is working on for you. Yes. Okay, y'all may hear what I just said. Help us, Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you're not giving God something to work with, right. then he's not just going to fold his arms and say, well, you know, I think I'm going to just send Hillary Clinton or Steve Harvey. No, it, it comes from a, a place of your faith and your expectations. And then you begin to, to see it. You begin to talk about it. And then I believe God watches that. I believe that the Spirit of the Lord superintends that. Because if you delight yourself in God, he will give you a desire. I don't believe that I just came up with that. I believe that because I delighted myself in the Lord, that he gave me that desire. Right. And then it created in me an expectation. I fully expect to go to the White House. I don't know for what. You know, I fully expect, though, that under this next presidency uh, that we believe will be our candidate, my candidate, uh, that I will get, now if the other person get in, I know I'm not going. (laughs) I'm already on the blacklist with him. (laughs) But it's okay, that's not my expectation. So think about right now, what is your expectation? What kinds of things are you dreaming of and idealizing for yourself? And maybe it won't happen this year, but it's something that you have a long-term goal, maybe over the next three years, five years, that you are going to do. I, I have an expectation I said to my daughter when she turned 40 that I wanted us to go on a cruise. And I've been working on this cruise for five years. But it was my expectation to be able to take my family on a cruise. And now God is making it happen this year. Thank you, Lord. That's my expectation. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. When you don't have an expectation, right. you don't give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Right. Amen. And so I, I wonder, you know, that, that, that word is just coming. So we're going to look at Luke chapter number five, Luke chapter number five, and uh, I'm going to just kind of teach this the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me, that your expectation will not be disappointed. Praise God. Your expectation will not be cut off. That if you can dare to dream it, if you can dare to create it in your faith, create it in your mind, create it in your inner being, you can see yourself walking, mm. and you've never walked. Man. If you can see yourself prosper. Yes. I was listening to Pastor Kish, and he said 
something to me earlier last month that he doesn't know how they're doing it, but their tithes have increased. Their giving has increased. And I, I remember him saying to me last year, I, I want to get out of poverty so bad. That was his expectation. Mm -hmm. I want to get out of poverty so bad. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, I'm sick of it. Yeah. He said, I'm sick of it. Yes. I'm sick of having no money. I'm sick of, of, of I'm just sick of it. I, if it's been all my life. Right. So what he was doing, I believe he delighted himself in the Lord. Yes. Amen. And God gave him the desire. Yes. Now, while God, while God was ordering the desire of prosperity in his life, then God was speaking to me to create an opportunity for them. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, without an expectation, you don't give the Holy Spirit anything to work on. True. You already know how to go to work. You already know how to pay your bills. You already know how to cook the evening meal. But what are you expecting beyond that? What is your faith working on? I want to write, you know, like six or seven more books. Mm. You know, I have an expectation that, you know, I will be the baccalaureate speaker at universities. I have an expectation that I'll be a keynote speaker for TED Talk. I have an expectation. These are huge, gigantic things that only God can do. Yes. I don't know anybody. I'm not connected like that. I don't have anybody that owes me any favors. But if I create the expectation, yes. God will intervene. Amen. God will show up. Amen. And God will create the opportunity or the relationship that I need for my expectation to manifest itself. Thank you, Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm Amen. saying? Amen. I'm not going to be able to let this expectation because it's so critical to our faith. It's so critical. I fully expect 3,000 strong. Yeah, amen. 1,000 me. Amen. 1,000 me. Amen, yes. 1,000 children. Yes. To the glory of God. Yes, amen. And I don't mean when I die. Amen. Right now. God. Right. I don't mean in the next dispensation. Yes. I mean, I Amen. Amen. And it's so gigantic. Thank it's so Lord. enormous. Thank I, I almost Jesus. want to create a word. Yes. Uh, ginormous. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta put it all together. But it's, it's only something that God can do. That's true. Yeah. That's why we still confess it on Saturdays. Yes. Holy Ghost Cathedral, Holy Ghost for Gospel Church is a family church. Amen. Three thousand strong. Amen. One thousand men. One thousand women. Men and 1,000 children to the glory of God. Now, when you're looking at 200 people or less, mm. but my expectation is still 3,000. Yes, yes. And that gives the Holy Spirit something to work with right, right. in my faith to grow me, to expand my capacity. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have an expectation, right. Your smallness will frustrate you. Right, right, right. Because the divine nature of God is gigantic. Yes. Hallelujah. We are partakers of the divine nature. And we have escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. We've received these great and precious promises. I don't need God to help me do what I already know how to do. Right. I need God to do the supernatural, Thank you. the gigantic, the enormous. I need God to open doors for, for me that I don't know nobody that's got the key. Come on. Yeah. Amen. I need God to do something so supernatural for me that I know it's God and everybody around me knows it's God. Yes. You know it had to be God. Yes. For the next president of the United States to be at the Holy Ghost Cathedral. Yes. You know that was God. That was too big for me to fix, for me to control, for me to manipulate. That's why when you look up there and you say, you shall say God did it. When I pull the pictures up and I see her preaching here, 
It always has that in the backdrop. Yes. I've never looked at those pictures and not weep before the Lord and still say, God, thank you. Yes. God, thank you. You gave me that desire. You gave me that, that want to, that expectation. And I didn't let it die. I didn't, I didn't cast away my confidence. My God. That's so amazing to me. And when I got to the Democratic National Convention, and I was put in a private suite right next to President Bill Clinton, and I kept looking at the cameras, and I said, what are all those cameras over there for? And finally I turned and looked, and I said, oh my God. I am in a private suite where all the food already was. <laughs> I wasn't down on the floor, I was in a private suite. That when I got my badge, my badge said, Private suite, invited guests. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Are you listening? To Thank me? you, Lord. And what I'm trying to say to you is that I don't want to leave you behind. I need you yes. to get where I am in terms of your expectations. Get on board. I need you to change the way you think. Amen. Check because it is your smallness right. that is frustrating you. Yes. It is your it is your routine that's mm. frustrating. Yes. And you may not be able to do it as fast. It may not happen as quick as you would like. But your expectation will not disappoint you. Thank you, Jesus. Saints, we've we've stopped expecting. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to anybody? Mom. Is this uh, is this good to you? Yeah. Because it's often good to me. Yeah. We have stopped expecting. We have stopped dreaming. We've stopped idealizing. We've become so regular as a Christian. I want to live a life of influence. I want to live a life of impact. I want to leave a mark on my generation. Yes. I want Thank to you, leave Lord. a mark on my generation. Thank you, Jesus. I want hundred thousand dollar clients. Yeah. I yes. want two hundred and fifty dollar. Two hundred fifty thousand dollar clients. Jesus name. I want the kind of clients that can write the check in his name. That's Amen. My Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That what are you right. expecting? What if, what are the things that you have before God that only He can do? You know you can't do. You know you don't have the resources. All you can do is believe. That, that, that's, that's where I'm going to go. Luke chapter number five. Are you there with me so far? Okay, I'm not going to be long, but I do want you to hear this. So it, so it was, verse one, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake, just Nazareth, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon, and asked him to push out a little from the land. And he sat down <laughs> and taught the multitudes from the boats. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. In other words, I've just given up on my expectation. I'd have parked the boat <laughs> and put the net up. Amen. I don't even have a desire to fish no more. But at your word, I will do it. Wow. Wow, that is so good. I was standing in that line. Uh, when it was Saturday morning, there's no way I was going to make that flight. That was impossible. There was no way I was going to make that flight. There were at least 200 people in front of me. And I was early. I was two hours early. But God stepped in. God stepped in. My expectation was, will not, your expectation will not disappoint. When that man walked up to me and said, ma'am, do you need a wheelchair? I'm telling you, this 
this is so powerful. I'm still in awe. And I said, I don't know, do I? He said, yes, you need a wheelchair. And when I got in that wheelchair, he rolled me past all those people. <laughs> past the crowd of people. All the way up to the front. Check my bags. Gave me the baggage claim check. And then they cried and said, the Boston flight is closed. And those people started cussing from something. Oh my God. And he rolled me right on around to security. Had the crowd of people in the line. Took me straight to the woman. And the woman looked at my passport and said, you got it? He said, I got it. Now, there was no more than 10 minutes before the flight was supposed to depart. The man walked out of security and said, are you able to walk? Can you walk through? I said, yes. I got up. I walked through nice and slow. Praise God. Amen. I got to stay in character. <laughs> And when I got on the other side, the lady wiped my fingers and my hands. And I sat back down in the wheelchair. And the man rolled me to the gate. And when I got to the gate, they weren't even boarding it. And he said, he said, he said, now you just sit here until they get ready to board those that need to go down earth. Is there anything else you need? At this point, I'm almost in tears. So I reached in my pocket to give him some good money. I took out some good money and put it in his hands. He said, you don't have to do that. I said, sir, are you real or are you an angel? He said, no, ma'am, I'm real. I said, what is your name? And he moved his thing so I could see him. And I said, OK, trace it. He said, yes, ma'am, Bishop Carlemma Wow. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Lord. Now, that's still a major testimony. Thank you, Lord. I know it ain't a million dollars, but it's a major testimony. And while I was sitting there, I can hear the people bellowing back in the line because they did not let anybody else through. They had to revoke all those people. And those people was mad as hell. <laughs> And I could hear them bellowing and cussing. It was, it was like a, a, a memorial service. And nobody came after me to get on that flight. What is your expectation? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. What is your expectation? And Simone texted me. She said, well, do you want me to come and get you? And I just said, no. Let's just see what happens. I had an expectation that God was going to do something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he was going to do. I don't know how he was going to do it. But if you live in a constant state of expectation, you will find your life will get so sweet. And God will continue to surprise you and do outstanding miracles for you because you live expected to 
to get the right person on the line. I fully expected not to argue with nobody. And I fully expected to be able to understand their English. Yeah, amen. Uh -huh. I hear and all you. of it happened just like I expected. Thank you, Lord. So when I read the code to the guy, he said, uh, Miss Vaughn? I said, yes. He said, this is what I'm going to do. I said, what are you going to do, sir? Now, I didn't know where, which way he was going with this. He said, I'm getting ready to ship you out a brand new print. Now listen to me. I said, really? He said, yes. And this is what I want you to do. Take that printer, take the ink out of it, and put it in a box that we send you the new printer in. I said, well, will this new printer be it? Because I just bought $200 worth of ink. He said, don't worry, we're going to send ink. And the ink that you now use will be able to fit in the new Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So today I had a little help. I took the, the box out. I opened it up, picked it up. We unplugged it, put the new one in. Brand new. HP. Going to ship the old one out tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. See, I'm telling you, if you live in a state of expectation. Yes, yes, yes. Your oh, yeah. smallness is frustrating. Mm. Your, your pessimism is frustrating. You don't expect it to turn out good. You don't expect it to work for you. You don't expect God to get in your boat. Y'all just, I just said something. Peter had been fishing, and now Jesus comes because he needs a pulpit. And he gets in Peter's boat. Peter had become frustrated by his smallness. So Jesus comes and gets in his boat and starts teaching. Wow. Then he turns to Peter and says, what you so mad about? I've been here all night. And we ain't caught no fish. You ever talk to anybody that's never... Never positive. Yeah. Always got something negative. Always looking at the yeah. at the dark side of the thing. Oh yeah. Don't you hate talking to somebody like that? <laughs> that drives me crazy. Because they have lost their expectations. And Jesus said, "Is that all your problem is?" He said, "Now." Nah. Let's launch out in the deep. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let's launch out into the deep and drop your net. Now he's still in the boat. So you know things get ready to take. Right? He's still in the boat. We're in Luke chapter number five. So he's still in the boat. Now look here. <laughs> look at this. He said, I haven't caught anything. But at your word, they come by hearing, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they were beginning to sink. Yeah. When Simon Peter saw in verse 8, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, because <laughs> I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Now you got to understand this is so big, because Peter was a fisher. He was a professional fisher. One of the texts that I was reading, one of the supporting texts, said that he put his net on the other side of the boat. That he not only went out <laughs> into the deep, but he put his net out on the other side of the boat. Wow. Sometimes our techniques are outdated. Wow. 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 Well, I'm, I'm almost done. You've been praying like that for 30 years. You've been preaching like that for 20 years. You've been cooking.
been like that for a hundred years. You, you, you are still the same. You are expecting a multi-millionaire husband. Hello. Uh -huh. But you are not good yet at your finances. So your techniques need to change. You didn't, okay, y'all, I'm gonna go down on this side. See, I found something out. Women want the best, but they don't always bring the best. Wow. I just said something. You waiting, you, you need <laughs> no shine You want the best, you got it all lined up. But there must be an exchange. What are you bringing to the table? You have such high demands, but you don't have any major contribution. So the two of you can never come in agreement because when you get to a certain age, you should already be stable. And the kind of man that you want does not want to rescue you. Amen. I'm teaching you. They may like you, but they don't want to rescue you. They don't want you to be a charity case. Because he has an expectation too. My God. See, you have an expectation. But he has one too. You're looking at him and he's all of that in the bag of chips. And he's looking at you. <laughs> walk, walk, walk. <laughs> am I talking good about that? Yes. Hey, brother, am I talking right? Yes. Here you come with everything. You got the gold, silver, you got the brief truck, you got everything. And she can't say, <laughs> hey, I like me. He don't want, he don't want a client. He doesn't want a project. He has an expectation just like you do. Amen. All they say that they not. Amen. 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 Amen, quiet church. That's why, because, so there's no agreement. You back to agreement now. You, there's no agreement. Our Eve was made for Adam. So they were compatible. Mm. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. I said they were compatible. He had what she needed, and she had what he needed. And they were naked and not ashamed. They came in agreement, and then everything, praise God, flourished for them. And God came in the midst of them in the cool of the day. So we have great expectations, but sometimes we're not as prepared as we should be. I know what I bring to the table. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. Come down on my shadow. Oh, yes. They got to come correct. Amen. Amen. I don't need them to pay my bills. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I can contribute to their dream. I am skillful. Amen. I am intelligent. Yeah. Amen. I am accomplished yeah. on many fronts. Yes, yes. I am active. Amen. Yes. So my expectation, amen, amen. of them can be matched by their expectation of me. Right. Now that's compatibility. Yes. I don't want no project. I was talking to a young man tonight. I said, son, I said, listen to me. He he lost his wife a few few years back and he was still grieving her. And I said, We can't do nothing. Praise mm -hmm. God. You still got a son in college, all I, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing none of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. No heavy lifting for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rescuing nobody. Amen. Been there, done that, did that two times. I'm not rescuing nobody. Amen. Amen. My expectation is that you are already set and excited and happy. And son, you are still in love with your dead wife. And I respect that. I don't want part of your attention. I want all of your attention. And I'm not going to compete with your dead wife. 
Yeah. Amen. This is not my expectation. I ain't lifting nobody out of nothing. Right. Y'all are saying Amen. I ain't helping you to do nothing. I'm not buying no car for you. Come on. Yeah. I'm not paying no bills for you. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. yes. And if I'm nervous, you're going to sign a free. Right, right, right. Y'all are saying that. See, I got expectations like that. I got big expectations. So when, when Jesus got in the boat, Peter had lost his expectation. But it instantly changed. I want you to just slip your hands up and say, God, I want you to get in my boat. God, I want you to get in my boat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that again. Lord, get in my boat. Lord, Lord get, get in my boat. boat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, get in my boat. Change the dynamics of how I do things. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Change the dynamics of how I see things. How I think about things. Your smallness is frustrating you. It's not the devil that's on your nerves. It's your own smallness. Mm -hmm. You've been fixing in that same spot. How long, Peter? You know the Sea of Galilee. is only one real sea there. You know, so you went to your same fishing spot. You went to your same spot. You took your water to the nets. You didn't have an expectation. To fill two boats. You didn't have an expectation that your nets would break. You didn't have an expectation that there was more fish out here for you than ever before. I know you're a professional fisher. I know you know how to fish. But get your expectation bigger than what you're familiar with. Now launch out in the deep. Go where you've never been. Amen. Do what you've never done. See what you've never seen. Ooh, hallelujah. Hear what you've never heard. Get around people that you ain't never met. 